Uh, what else is going to be in Tasha's? We've got uh, sidekicks, which I think fits very well with the idea of having group patrons. It's now you have your own underlings, right? Like someone that can help you along in your adventure. So sidekicks are in- were introduced originally uh, where, James? Uh, sidekicks were first introduced in the D&D Essentials Kit, a boxed set uh, uh, that introduces an adventure called the Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. And it's kind of designed for DMs who have played through the D&D starter set and want to have a little bit more uh, guidance and push for creating their own campaigns. And one of those uh, things that it includes to give them that push are new sidekick rules. Um, These sidekick rules in the Essentials Kit give you a bunch of different uh, uh, personalities, NPC personalities and portraits, Mm -hmm. as well as stats for three sidekick only classes, the Spellcaster, the Expert, and the Warrior. Um, And these are, you know, almost like the cleric or wizard, the thief or bard, or sorry, the rogue or bard, and the fighter or barbarian all kind of like rolled into a very simple, uh, easy to run in addition to another character package. Um, They only have six levels here, but in Tasha's, the scope of sidekicks have been expanded tremendously. Um, Sorry, go on. No, no, and it's, uh, I gotta say, there are some days where, like, I, I would be sorely tempted and very happy to play a sidekick. I mean, heck, if I'm playing d and I'm happy to play a sentient sword or magical item. Um, <laughs> well, it's interesting you bring that up, because that was one of the first questions we had about sidekicks uh, from chat. Um, we had, if I have a player wanting to test a D&D session, should I advise them to use a sidekick or a pre-generated character? Hmm. Um, you know, we are going to have our own opinions on this. Yeah, yeah. I, I would tend to let them play a sidekick, and then as that character, as they play that character, they'll realize maybe what subclass they want to play. That's mm-hmm. how I would go. Pre-generated characters sometimes you're just kind of like in you're in that zone, right? And that's it. Um, mm-hmm. Depending on what the stats are and everything else, um, but I see that evolution. Like, what if everyone starts out as a sidekick? Again, this is a very common narrative hook, right? Like, maybe uh, your session zero could be everyone's playing sidekicks and then you do know what you want to end up doing um i do like that idea of like a single session especially with getting a new player into it um if you just take the term sidekick and ignore it for a moment these are basically just simplified characters uh mostly the the character sheets which is um it's good for also for dms who need to run that other character for some reason you know you've been playing an npc and now all of a sudden your npc gets drafted into a battle well instead of grabbing a monster stat block or something else here's kind of something in between Mm -hmm. so yeah if you're doing a single session and you want to get a bunch of new people into the game and you think they're going to be more interested if you can jump into the role play right away but you want to make sure that they have a couple things that they could actually roll dice for then yeah using the the sidekick rules to give them the simplified stat block Block without making it feel like they're way less powerful than the other players if other players are using regular characters is a great way uh to get people interested and then once they're they're interested even if that sidekick character isn't their cup of tea now they've got the basics of the mechanics down and they might feel more comfortable all right let's build a a basic character at level one and let's go through and get you you know all of the stuff that's on a regular character sheet so uh, Mm -hmm. but i wouldn't do it for too long unless uh, unless you're you've got a player who is like a jump in jump out player you know maybe they can only show up every couple of sessions and so they want a a character that you know, all right, my, my friend is going to run my character while I'm gone. And, you know, so this character is still there. And I don't care about having, you know, the, the amazing back backstory and the, the huge character sheet. I just want to be able to jump in wherever I can and play. Having a sidekick for that is really good because then that takes the pressure off of, oh, wait, you're level five now? I missed three sessions. I don't know how to play this character. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, like for yeah, a one a- shot. That's a good point. That's a very good point. You're right. Uh, because even missing one session, I mean, even a week with some subclasses can be difficult. Like artificers are very uh, complex. Um, mm-hmm. You know, wizards, extremely so as well. Um, so it, it's it's easy to get out of touch with some spell casting uh, subclasses in particular. With fighters, I think it's pretty, you know, <laughs> I think you got a fighter. But 
yeah, I, I could see myself playing a sidekick levels one through 20 and I'd be fine because I'm in it for the role playing. Um, and I think there are plenty of people that would like that option, especially people who are new to D and D they may not want to go into the, the deep dive and the number crunching. They may want just, okay, every once in a while I just shoot my magic and this happens. Um, I think that's yeah. a totally legit way to play. Um, yeah. I, I often want to play monsters. So <laughs> this is a good way to like, maybe kind of make that a reality in some ways. If you, if you can move things around. I think my opinion uh, d differs from the, the two of yours a little bit. I, I think absolutely, if you're if you're more in it for the role play than for uh, really digging into character mechanics, sidekicks are a great start. Especially because if you have the essentials kit, there are a lot of really cool pre-generated characters there. Like uh, one of these characters, Donna Bella Fiasco, is a human spellcaster. And her quirk is that she is a young magic user who wears a paper mache unicorn mask because it makes her feel more magical. And then it has a personality ideal bond and flaw there. And it's like, that's a character. If, yeah. if you're looking for pre-generated D&D characters, there's almost nothing better than grabbing these sidekicks. Um, for low level one shots, I think their niche works perfectly for that. But I, I think for the for anything beyond low level one shots, you would be better off giving even a new player a pre-generated character. Now, <laughs> don't throw a new player into a 20th level game, no matter what you're doing. That, that's that's <laughs> madness. <laughs> um, you know, be be mindful of what you're tossing these people uh, into. But if if you're if you're playing a game that's starting at first level and someone's trying to get a feel for what D and D is, I I think helping them build a character is better than giving any kind of pregen. Help them build their first level fighter or ranger or barbarian or something, and make sure that they know why the things are there on their character sheet. What does the proficiency bonus do? Why is it there? Why is the attack bonus for? What do I use? When I'm rolling damage, do I look at the two hit column or to the, the yeah. damage column? What's going on? Because the what they learn there at the beginning, even if it takes a little bit longer than just giving them a pre-generated like sidekick stat block, it will help them, it will provide a, a more solid foundation for them to build on later. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back and kind of like tear out the foundation, put a new one in there, and it's more work on, on the long term. Mm -hmm. But if it's a if it's a low level one shot, all that goes out the window. And it also kind of depends on the, the player, right? You've yeah. got some players like we've been talking about who, uh, all right, I've been watching Critical Role, and I love the interaction between everybody. I want to try my first D&D game. And the thing that I'm interested in is building a, a character that I'm going to play as though this was a play or a, a right. musical or an opera or something. Right. And the numbers are just going to help. Mm -hmm. And then you have people who are into the crunch, who are like, ah, I want to, you know, I've been playing World of Warcraft or Skyrim, and I really want to get into the number crunching. And I think knowing in advance that will also help because the, the number cruncher, even though a full character creation is going to take a little bit longer, they're going to be happier that way. Whereas mm -hmm, the role yeah. player, you hand them the the sidekick and the, the bonds and flaws and everything. And they're like, great, just tell me when I need to roll the one dice that has the, the different sides on it and I'll be great. Um, so yeah, you, it's it, that's probably one of those moments where we say, well, you should talk to your DM. Yeah. you should always talk to your dm <laughs> yeah yeah we made it 45 50 minutes into the show before uh that came up um there's I, all I, I love this question real quick if i can interject have you ever this is from brother something uh, i was just about have, to give the question <laughs> oh really? you were have you go ever it, created it. unwanted or unasked for sidekicks yes i love doing it every time i love uh sometimes giving once players have gone up a little a, a little bit in renown having a sidekick that won't leave them alone that is like their number one fan that ruins things for them is kind of funny now it's kind of yeah. against the point of a sidekick <laughs> have you ever played oblivion and like you reach the end of the arena subquest and like the adoring the fan, fan shows up and falls oh. you everywhere <laughs> oh, that fan. yeah and that, yeah. that conversation system is not good enough to be able to really deal in the way that right. you want to with that fan i'm gonna say that's, that's where D, D shines is like the, finding that nuance of being able to deal with somebody like that <laughs> like oh all right well i guess i'm killing you now no, yeah. no, no. <laughs> it, it, it is it's it, it's a nice like i've definitely done it i had a a, a creature uh, from the Feywild wild that was a fan of a character that i brought in and he was desperately annoying 
um, and, and was with the party for a very brief amount of time. <laughs> you know, psychics are also fun in the sense that you can kind of, uh, for the dungeon master as a tool, uh, sacrifice them to show them the stakes, right? You know, like if, if your player has a psychic of their own, they're not playing a psychic um or somebody else's and they die i mean that's that's terrifying that's like a warning sign so it's a, it's a good basis for npcs um for the dungeon master to use um so and this is. this then brings up a similar question um from uh kj is sidekick is the sidekick a better companion for a beast master ranger Ooh. Ooh, this is a controversial question yeah i'm i'm no. gonna say no, no. uh because yeah. the w- the people who are, and I say this as the DM of somebody who is playing a Beastmaster Ranger, who has played for many years and has enjoyed it. Um, the people who gravitate towards the Beastmaster Ranger, irregardless of what any of us think about the mechanics or how good or bad or indifferent they are about it, the role playing that you're gravitating towards is that idea of having an animal companion whatever that animal companion does do i have the black bear that's the tank do i have an owl or do i have something that flies that scouts do i have you know whoever whatever that is and having that innate link to this animal it it's the same reason druids play druid players who enjoy doing wild shaping you know they want that feel and a sidekick is really meant for a humanoid player especially with the the powers that they get especially with the bonds and the flaws and so i would i would almost rather grab a monster stat block and just use that if for some reason you don't want to go down the uh using a beastmaster ranger the full suite of capabilities or if you've got a character who isn't a beastmaster ranger but is being given the opportunity to to have a a companion animal like that um i think the the sidekicks are really for characters that can talk (laughs) yes and that's that is something that i i find very fun and intriguing in in terms because i play a talker right like I could easily just play a character who gets by with persuasion. Like, I don't even need to get into combat. Like, if I am convincing monsters to fight monsters or gods to fight gods or whatever, if I, by role-playing alone, can shape the story, that makes me incredibly excited to play d d um, To have those social... those the, And again, this ties into the patron idea, right? Like, the fact that there are now group patrons. Well, yes, you're not playing a fl- fully-fledged... Uh, subclass class and subclass but if you are playing a sidekick if you've decided to go on that journey in dnd you still can get renown you can still have political power you can still you know etc 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 be loaned magical items there are lots of ways to supplement this uh sidekick potentially um inside of an organization in terms of what you give it uh they actually finds and it, it kind of like sets up the stakes like i would totally play my main uh, for fun as a test as just a psychic just to see what i could get away with because uh Avery, my main character there's nothing i love better than convincing people to do stuff it's hilarious every time or <laughs> monsters or demons or whatever it's the funniest thing to me i don't need to do well on combat i for some reason fail every stealth check i've ever done no matter like whether i have expertise in it i am terrible at stealth i am cursed as a human being but persuading is so fun and this, uh, continuing that, uh, if you have a party who are all bound to a patron, who are all in the same organization, there are other people in that organization. And being able to interact with those people on a regular basis not only helps flesh out your organization and give you these closer ties to your patron, but then if you go out on missions and you've managed to convince one of them to come with you, you can have the players take over the stat block while the DM is still playing the character. And now there's an a greater investment there. As soon as you take control over a character's ability to live or die in a combat situation, you kind of start to care about them a lot more. Um, And so having the sidekick, uh, having a suite of sidekicks as a DM that you can then give to your players to control as they go out on missions, or even having that as part of your, your patron uh, leveling up. Hey, you've gotten to a point where now anyone who's a lower rank than you, they have to, they they have to 
do stuff for you. And maybe that doing stuff is coming out and being a torchbearer on a mission or carrying uh, supplies or mm -hmm. helping with, um, you know, hey, we got a bunch of fighters and heavy, heavily armored and spellcasters. We, uh, we don't have a rogue in this party, but this mission really needs some, some stealth. Let's go get ourselves someone else in the organization who can go take care of the stealthy, stealthy stuff. So mm -hmm. uh, offering them a sidekick from your patron is a is a, a great way to benefit the party without the DM having to take over as like a full DM NPC, which is never a good idea. That yeah. is a really good combination of the two things we've talked about today. I think that's that's almost one of the best uses of group patrons I can imagine is using aid, the help of other people as a reward. Um, and sidekicks don't have to be all uh, all mechanics either you know sidekicks are NPCs sidekicks have internal life they have things they know um, they have things they do when they're not sidekicking it with the party uh, what would it be like if you... it. <laughs> what would it be I like it. if your party you know met a guy let's use one of the sidekicks from the essential skid what if they met uh, Talon Thornwild the human expert with his coonskin cap uh, and met him at first level. They went on an adventure where they slew uh, an ogre. Mm. And then five levels later, they come back to Phandalin and find that, uh, and find that he has become a local legend in that yeah. town. And now like, what has happened to Talon Thornwild in those intervening five levels? He's gotten stronger. He's learned things. He has respect that in some ways the characters don't have here in Frontier Town Phandalin. We have one more question from chat before we, we have to end because we're getting towards the end of the day. And I just love it from Frenzy wants to know, would it be an awesome idea in a giant campaign to have a player play an Etten with one of the heads as a forced sidekick? Yes, 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 yes. yes. In fact, I uh, I was reminded, oh, hey, that's that's brilliant. I love having like a side head as a, as a, as a, because <laughs> he can help you somehow, right? Well, I also was kind of thinking about this thing that just came out from Whiskits. Oh, uh, the Dire Troll. <laughs> yeah, and Dire Trolls came out a while ago. But what always blew me away is, like, you've got multiple heads, and you've got, like, you know, a couple of tum-tum mouths as well. And I, oh, I, I know this is sick, but I kind of want to play a one-shot where every member of the party is one of these heads on the troll. Like the you whole want to play party. A Far Realms <laughs> campaign, basically. You want to do you want to do the horror campaign, except you want to be the monsters. Listen, he's listen, he's really persuasive. All right, you know this one's the sidekick. He, he he's good at stealth. <laughs> I don't know why the stomach is good at stealth, but yeah, I think that's brilliant. He's I, good I at stealth love... because no one ever thinks to look at the stomach for a head. God, how horrifying! I don't want to play at the end though. <laughs> like I don't I don't want I don't want just a head talking to me all the time. That would drive. Yeah, it's a great idea. I'm not doing it. <laughs> if you buy in from both of those players, yeah, sure. Also, yeah, I will I will uh, put our Etten hi, hello in the chat because we have an emote that's just an Etten head saying hi, hello, which is hi, one hello. of my favorites. So, <laughs> so uh, there you go. Sidekicks and patrons and ways that you as your player can, uh, you don't all have to be Eric Okra in order to have a tie before the beginning of a campaign. <laughs> You but, definitely don't have to play Aarakocra. Um. But, but if you're all Aarakocra who are working for, you know, a, a newspaper organization, and so you are oh the delivery service for the newspapers, and you fly over towns dropping the, newspapers. The on weather reporters. Exactly. The What's the weather up there right now? <laughs> Give me five seconds. <laughs> We've got like a 10% chance of dragon, <laughs> you know. Wait, make that five. I yeah. gotta go. No, oh, 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 oh it's going up, it's going up, it's yep. going up, it's going up. Yep, no, 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 we're out of here. Uh, oh, man. Th that's fantastic. That, to be continued on all of that, like I want to see that in the DMs Guild, like just the watchers who are like looking out for monster attacks uh, all the time is a great organization. That's just what you do. Uh, thank you so much, Lauren Urban, our community manager at D&D &D Beyond, as well as James Hake, our lead writer at D&D &D Beyond. James has written lots of lots of things uh, in the D&D &D universe. Um, I love patrons. I love sidekicks. I love all. I, I love this expanding kind of universe of D&D &D mechanically that kind of gives you two different levels of play where you can really focus on role playing. And that's what both of these items can do for you. 
um, depending how you play that. And I, I, I fell in love with the sidekicks the minute they came out. I, 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 so I'm excited that they will have more levels in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. That is available for pre-order right now on D&D Beyond. So if you haven't picked that up, I highly recommend it. I, um, I, I love everything in this book quite a bit. Uh, I, I know I say that a lot, but I love subclasses. I love more Dungeon Master options, more player options. It just allows you to expand the character and the type of game you want to play. And uh, I think Tasha's Cauldron of Everything is a fantastic example of everything um, uh, that, that, that can really expand your universe. So thank you so much for watching. Take care of each other and uh, have a great day. Bye. Pre-order Tasha's Cauldron of Everything on D&D Beyond and unlock exclusive pre-order rewards, including digital dice.